Bokitov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. This morning, uh, we actually uh, are receiving breaking news coming out of Iraq. And I'm uh, going to be looking at some of these other stories as well, where it speaks about uh, remove America from the region. New head of Iran's Quds Force promising to avenge uh, Soleimani's killing. But the breaking news, uh, of course, is why Soleimani was actually in Iraq in the first place. The United States, from what we are understanding, was fully aware that the uh, Iranian general was there on a mission of peace, something that had been agreed upon in advance by the uh, Saudi government as well as the Iraqi government who was mediating a peace agreement between the Saudi Kingdom and Iran to cease hostilities. Now, if you guys remember back when all this issue was going on in the uh, Gulf region, the Japan uh, ship being targeted, it was alleged that Iran was doing this. Uh, I mentioned to you how our Middle East correspondent had given us a little heads up to let us know that the Saudi prince uh, had gone uh, to meet with Iranian counterparts there to bring about peace. They were concerned about being ditched by the American government. Uh, and now uh, that information has been confirmed by our, by our source. We did, my wife did bring this to my attention last night, uh, late last night, or actually early in the morning, or about two, three o'clock in the morning, that another uh, group had shared this information on a radio broadcast. A call in person had contacts in the Middle East there that confirmed, in fact, yes, he was there on a peace agreement. This is the message I had gotten myself. Says, uh, hi, Stephen. The subject, of course, Soleimani, according to the Prime Minister of Iraq today. Let me blow this up for you guys so you'll be able to see this. Uh, we want to make sure we can see this as best we can. Let's see, can I blow it up? Uh, may not be able to blow it up on this screen. But anyway, according to the Prime Minister of Iraq today, in Iraqi parliament session that resulted in expelling U.S. Army from Iraq, Soleimani was supposed to meet him that morning at 8.30, bringing a message from Iran's leader to Saudis consisting of Iran accepting a condition of the Saudi, uh, Saudis for peace between the two countries. He said every detail was already ironed out and and there was one thing that Khomeini had to agree, agree on so the two countries can stop their hostilities toward each other. He said, I later found out that Khomeini had given his okay and General Soleimani was bringing the message to me so I can relay it to the Saudis. Of course, that is not something Israel can accept. So they called President Trump. And of course, the rest is history. They did not want a peace deal going through. So instead, the Iranian general was targeted for assassination. That makes a completely different picture. From what we understand, the radio program that had the call in, uh, the person that called in, uh, they were not completely off the air for sharing that information. Not sure exactly what will happen as we reveal this information to the world. But anyway, uh, uh, this was voted upon. RT says, our, uh, remove American from the region. New head of Iran's coup force promises to avenge Soleimani's killing. We got that on RT. We have uh, several headlines there. Trump threatens Iraq with very big sanctions unless it pays back billions for air base if U.S. troops are forced to withdraw. <laughs> It's really an audacity if you ask me. We invaded the country on false pretenses. Trump is well aware of that. He knows that. He's at, as far as I know, he's admitted it. Uh, we're there on a fal false pretense. We build a base there to occupy a country that is we invaded on a false pretense. And now they've got to repay the cost of building the U.S. Uh, air base there in a country that we invaded illegally, a country that did not have weapons of mass destruction. The Turkish troops are starting to move towards Libya, according to Erdogan. Again, what are they doing? They are setting up for this new world order, just as we told you they're going to do. They're going to do a war with Iran, one way or the other. 
There's no way around it. I remember my uh, source from Israel said that to me very bluntly. Iran is going down. And there's no way around it. You know, it's kind of interesting because I had asked my uh, Middle East source to know a little bit more about this man, uh, General Soleimani. And because there's all types of information out there about him, but I wanted to get a little bit better feel for this general, who he, who he really was. He was not a military commander to start with. Uh, he was from a place called the Kerman province in southern Iran. Um, he is a part of what they call the Lore people. They claim that this is one of the original Persian, uh, part of the Persian Empire, going back to that particular um, uh, background. He did become very known as he volunteered for war. They saw that he had the ability to organize and manage uh, others, so they moved him in as a commander. Uh, he was then put in uh, charge of, uh, given a mission to fight smugglers that were bringing in heroin from Afghanistan and the border area of Afghanistan and Pakistan with Iran. Uh, he dealt with that for a while. His task was, uh, then later his, uh, he was put on a task to organize the Iraqi resistance movement, which suffering from their lack of discipline and communication, a big number of the Iraqis that were fighting the occupation force, of course being the United States, so yes, uh, as a general of the Iranian force of fighting with Iraqis to try to stop uh, American advancement, sure, he would have blood on his hands of American soldiers. And, uh, and, but you know, it's just like uh, the, the man says to me here, he says, call him responsible for the death of American soldiers is like making Leslie Clark responsible for the death of the Serbs or making General Schwarzkopf responsible for the deaths of thousands of Iraqis. When Soviets invaded Afghanistan, anyone who helped the Afghans was a hero. American invasion of the Iraq was an illegal invasion based on a lie. That's very true. It, and note, he made a point here, a very good point. If China had done what America did, and Soleimani had gone in and done what he did, wouldn't the Americans call him a hero? In other words, if the Chinese had invaded Iraq, and it wasn't us, they just decided to invade Iraq and claimed it was weapons of mass destruction and they were their enemy and come to find out there was nothing there and this man was in there trying to help the local people detour the aggression. Wouldn't we call him a hero? Probably so. We probably would. In fact, President Bush was noted as saying the same. But anyway, when ISIL was created and invaded parts of Syria, Syria he was then tasked with that force to help Assad to try to push back the ISIS militants. Uh, it really took the Russians, though, in order to be able to push back ISIS and to retake uh, Syria back, put it back under control. But what they say is, what he said in here that was the real big issue for the Americans is that when they brought ISIS to a place, um, let me just pull this up for you here. When he began to fight ISIS, not just in Syria, but in Iraq, this is where the big issue came in. And this is what he said they couldn't, Americans could never forgive General Soleimani for. And they kind of pretty much hold him uh, responsible for that war there. He says, now generals can commit crimes, he writes this too, but helping oppressed people fight an illegal occupation or organizing everyday Joes to fight the oncoming monsters of ISIL who had just assassinated 2,200 students only because they were learning Western science. This is what ISIS did while they were in the country. And of course, he took on those ISIS militants. It also, he said, is not one of the crimes a general can commit, uh, excuse me, uh, is not one of the crimes a general commit. It was not a crime the last time I checked, but, when, but then again, we are living in an ever-changing world. Soleimani once said, once we established a line of defense to stop 
the onrushing ISIS advancement, which in the first four days, they went over 400 suicide trucks, each filled with hundreds of kilos of explosives into our line. The trucks were shielded with thick layers of steel. No army in the world could stand its ground in those circumstances, but we somehow did. Just to give you an idea, the Iraqi army that America had rebuilt would empty their positions and run away as soon as the appearance of ISIS could be seen in the horizon. And we saw that time and time and time again on the news. If you guys remember that. Mainstream media reported it as well. America had trained the Iraqi soldiers, but when ISIS was seen coming, they all fled. Uh, the generals would, uh, you know, their leaders would, they would get out first. In one case, he said they assassinated 1,060 soldiers in one base that surrendered to them. That was enough for the Iraqi commander to escape ahead of their soldiers. It would take the elite Quds force and Iraqi popular movement forces that he organized to match ISIS on the ground, and nobody else could. And this is one of the things he said that the West could not forgive him for, was stopping ISIS in its tracks. I do agree, and I realize when President Trump says he has American soldiers' blood on his hands for where, the way he uh, worked with the resistance when America invaded Iraq. I understand that. But I think the part that we were not being told, that the American public has not been told, is what I have shared with you here on the screen so you could see for yourself that indeed this commander was going there to make peace with the Saudi government. It was an official state visit. The Iraqis were working to coordinate that state visit. This is the reason why he was assassinated at the international airport in Iraq. I thought it was strange that he was actually targeted at the international airport. You know, I could maybe more believe it was an act of war if it was on some little back street somewhere. But it seemed a bit strange to me as well that he was assassinated at the international airport. Well, now we know why. According to the Iraqi um, prime minister, he was assassinated while they had already pre-planned a peace agreement with the Saudi government. The people in the Middle East are trying to make peace with one another. But for some reason, the United States and Israel will not accept peace in this region just makes you wonder why. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.